Welcome back to the channel. I'm Daniel Thompson, and for the purposes of this episode, I am a fitness enthusiast and a Ken Hutchins fanboy. Well, we'll just there we go. Um, I met Ken, I think, in '91 or '92. Um, Stayed in contact with him up until about 98, 2000, and then maybe a little longer, and then kind of just dropped out, <laughs> dropped out of exercise pretty much in general. So let me kind of start off with talking about my granddad, and this will come in a little later uh, in significance, my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather was a man of few words. He said the words only that needed to be spoke, said. Uh, he was very kind, overly kind. I don't know, okay, not overly kind. He was very kind. He was the epitome of a good person. My family refers to him as Saint Elmer. He was, he went to, he went to church on Sundays. That, that was probably the extent of what I saw, his religious uh, if he was overly religious, he didn't say it. If he was, he lived it. He didn't say it. He lived it. He was kind. He helped people. And um, my my brothers and my sister, we would rather have been beaten to a bloody pulp than to have a look of disappointment in our granddad's eyes. That was that was what it was. Um, in terms of character, in terms of behavior, Ken reminds me of my granddad. Uh, I think that's why I was really drawn to Ken. I see my notes. I made some notes. Yeah, I make notes. That's my thing. As I said before, Arthur was a showman. Good showman. I liked it. I liked the show. I liked what came out of the show. A lot of people did. Ken is an engineer. He may not have the exact title. Uh, he is an engineer. He is an applied scientist. A very good one. Very ardent one. Is that, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I, I honestly believe in the future, probably after he's passed, probably after I'm passed, hopefully that will be a while, I don't know. Um, there will be something like the Hutchins Institute for Exercise Engineering. Uh, maybe it'll eventually become, go into a, co a university. Maybe it will eventually become a standardized discipline, exercise engineering. And I don't mean, I'm not talking about just machines. I'm talking about the application of doing exercise, exercise engineering, similar to how civil engineering is. You've got a lot of things about civil engineering and you got to deal with dirt and water. Um, you know, you got class in civil engineering, you got classes of, of things like, um, so, you know, of course you got uh, dynamics and statics. And then you have, um, you know, working with dirt, and, like I said, with dirt and water. So you have all these different. Anyway, I think exercise engineering would be probably most similar in practice to civil engineering. Maybe not. It, it would be interesting to see that. I met Ken, like I said, so, no, 91, 92. I had... Oh, I remember now. I had just gotten the notice that um, to to do the medic certification, and I called them and I said, uh, "I'm about to go in to do the medic certification, and I'd like to have I had already had the super slow book, and I'd like to have your information on my mind when I go into the went to the certification thing." And he was like, "Come on down." He he was seemed very encouraged to have me come down. I was. 
kind of surprised. You know, here's this guy that had made this thinking that just big. And, um, whoa. I, I, it's kind of like overwhelmingly honored, maybe. I, I guess I don't know how to exp express that. Um, got down there, and I don't remember if he had just finished. I think he had just finished with a few things. It was a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, I think, maybe morning. Um, I watched. I think I watched him finish up with a client, and then we talked, and hours and hours and, and um, I think we went to dinner somewhere and I, don't, I think I went back home that evening and, and one of those things remember I, talk, I talked in the other episode about learning languages and you have to have just constant input that's what it's like with Ken you have constant overwhelming input it's a good thing you're probably, anytime he speaks, you're probably going to catch 10%. Ken's knowledge and practical usage of things is way, way up there. And you may catch a keyword, and you're going to be, said, you're mostly going to go nodding. Uh, I heard Enroad, I heard Sprocket, I heard. Yeah, so you'll hear keywords that you'll be trying to link things to. And he's going, and you're, you're still trying to remember. Oh no, what was it he said five minutes? Yeah, so you're, that takes a while. You catch up a little bit. I, it's, it's hard to catch up. Um, to, to be able to have a conversation with Ken, uh, it really does help to have pre-read as much of his material as possible. So that way when he speaks, you're not going to get lost. You're still going to get a little lost, but you won't get as lost. Um, it, it, Ken should have at least one, if not multiple, honorary doctorates. Um, he should. I think someday he will. M maybe po posthumously with his um, illness right now. I hope that doesn't happen. But it will happen. There will be honorary doctorate and probably some sort of exercise engineering or something something like that. When I went to go work with him, as I said before, I was always distracted hearing his, uh, not always, frequently distracted hearing him, watching him. I would even place myself um, in the view or when I'm watching the client where I could see him too, see him in the corner of my, corner of my eye, peripheral vision, just any amount of input for information of that, that I can get. I probably would have done, probably would have gotten better had, as an instructor, had I paid more attention to my clients. I'm sure Ken probably admo admonished me about that several times. I don't remember, probably did. I probably deserved it. When we um, when we would go to lunch, Babaloo's, there was a couple of Mexican restaurants, I forgot the name of them. They've come and gone, come and gone, but Babaloo's is still here. Um, it, uh, conversation always on exercise, occasionally on other things. Um, and it's fun when he goes off on other things, uh, off on different topics. And you realize his look on other topics is, is sometimes something you've never heard. So we pay attention, pay attention, whether it's politics or anthropology, um, med medicine. He will have read some materials that give a view of something you haven't heard before and he'll go on it and it's fun to listen to it's fun to and always makes your mind it it takes a day or a after let's say like you have a weekend with ken it takes about the rest of the week to process everything he said in your mind it when you go home it, it, it's 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 tough it's you get used to it you get used to it um 
probably I, I I'm I'm just gonna say this. When I I think I said it before, I described when I first met Ken and somebody else, what do you look like? And um, I think I said a combination of Oliver North, Dracula, and one of the movie stars. And um, the Dracula part was because of the intensity. <laughs> um, but he, to me, he still, he still looks like a engineer. <laughs> I like that. When he started working on the linear spinal flexion, I, I got the thrill that a lot of people would have had probably working at Nautilus if they had really, really, really wanted to be there. I'm sure most of the people at the Nautilus who were working, it was just a job. You show up and do your stuff. Maybe a few of them were diehards, but I'm sure for many people it was just a job. Uh, working with... Ken and, and being around the machine, the linear spinal flexion, it was not a job. That was, that was a study. I think that would have probably been closer to what an assistant to Tesla or Leonardo da Vinci would have been like to somebody with just an intense focus. And a Ken, while he's working on the machine, when we were being the little storage room occasionally he thinks out loud my wife does this and it's interesting when he's doing something technical with machine with uh, drill press bandsaw measuring he'll say what he's doing listen carefully those things are important whether it's machines if he even if he's not talking to you if he's just talking listen carefully the, those are important, not as far as, okay, maybe about exercise, but they're very significant in that how exercise design, exercise machine design principles are utilized. Um, Doug, or not Doug, I'm sorry, my friend Doug Spratt, I, I may do an episode or just talk about him briefly someday more, but um, my friend Drew work, works with uh, Ken quite a bit. And he lately has been doing a lot of inter interviews, so I get to see those. I'm super thirsty. It has been really hot, and I'm uh, doing this a little later, so yeah, I'm trying to stay cool. But with the um, super slow linear spinal flexion machine being part of a prototyping process I'd never been part of that I'd never seen uh, uh, the creation of any device and that was fun that was that was immensely fun I mean from just pieces of uh, metal tubing you bought pieces of uh, plastic pieces of wood um, doing the pads. Uh, the first pad we had was shaped, con con I forget, half moon shape. And on my back, it got, from the pressure, it got some marks. And we were like, that's weird. And so we changed the shape of the pad. And all those things were just, it was so fun. It, it, was, like, it, it was like a playground. I understood why so many people who created businesses and things in their garage those are just the most fun days they remember i'm sure steve wozniak probably still has memories e easily of doing the uh stuff in their garage um storage rooms i hope i hope i get to collaborate talk more with Ken and Drew and maybe many others in the in the field discuss some of the things I, I okay I don't want to say I disagree it's probably would be more accurate to say I remain unconvinced some of those things uh, of course I've already mentioned thorough inroad going to momentary muscular failure 
Um, one set. Mm, kind of, sort of, um, uni unilateral loading. These are nitpicky details. These are nit just these are nitpicky details. Important, important concepts, but not uh, not vital. Um, showing up to do a workout is vital. I, I want to. That's what I want to focus on getting people to do. Just getting showing up. Half the battle of half the battle of winning a game is showing up. How do we get people to show up? I've been out of the fitness business for over 15 years now, so. Um, I, I'm a little behind the scene, behind, not behind the scenes, behind the time on marketing, and I've been listening to some of the high intensity business things. Um, I like that. And Bill, this money, this, I forget, um, his video series, and Richard Chartrands. So I'm, ca I'm trying to catch up. If, um, if you have a series of videos that I haven't seen in a while maybe um, send me a link I'll catch up and if you get the um, chance uh, anytime soon to talk with Ken get a notepad or some device that you can quickly make some notes you're gonna need it if you can, practice writing without looking. I used to try to do that. It takes practice. Um, that, that will help. May, learn to make small notes, quick notes, not long. Learn to make keyword notes because you'll get too far behind. Um, imagine going to a lecture. Uh, Richard Dawkins. Ayn Rand fan people going to Ayn Rand lecture. Imagine going to um, Richard Feynman. You can't write fast enough if you try to do every word. There's no way. It, it, you make keyword notes and uh, then fill them in when you get home. After you've talked to him, reread his material. Read the material before you go see him, before you talk to him, if it's on the phone or probably video, and then reread the material again, especially anything he might have talked about. That will help. Whether or not you ever get this meet Ken, see him. If you are in exercise, his thoughts will have impacted you. You don't even know it. Even if you're in functional training or CrossFit or um, sports specific, there is something material of his that has passed your eyes, you just didn't know it yet. It will eventually pass your eyes more and more and more. And when it does, consider it greatly. Consider it deeply. Make a study as regularly as you can of the basics that he talks about. Make a study of the details. Make a study of how you can apply those those principles and things you learned. One of the things that's easy to do, and I, I got caught up in this in the early stages of exercise and of language learning, it's easy to get caught up in, in the academic part of it, to the process, the for example, I was learn. I, I got a lot of material on. Uh, get sorted real quick. I got a lot of material on um, how to learn languages, methods. Don't don't do that. Um, like they say, study principles, procedures, not methods. Methods are methods are marketing. The Pimsleur method. Uh, um, who's that other guy? Similar to Pimsleur. 
or is that a stone method? These are all these are all just tools. Um, these are useful, but uh, make, but they're not they're not met they're not actual principles. Um, when when you start learning on exercise, when you start learning language, um, there comes a point at which you need to take the stuff you learned and apply it. Ken is an applied scientist. Um, take the materials you've learned, develop procedures in your practice, in your facility. Check those procedures against what you've learned. I highly recommend the book, The Check Checklist Manifesto. I, I'm just going to say it, the checklist manifesto. Uh, I think that should be part of pretty much every business in some some form or fashion. We we used it at a couple of places. Um, prepare well before you talk with Ken. Everybody who's talked with him and and who's listening to this right now is going yes, yes. Prepare well, and then. Study hard after. It will benefit you greatly. Um, I, I wouldn't say record your session or thing with him unless he says it's okay. Um, but definitely enjoy, relish, and, and be in that moment if you get it. Not many people do. I was really lucky. Really lucky. Uh, and um, I know it. I know it. Ken, thank you. Thank you for the experience of being brought closer to exercise, being brought closer to thinking about it, being brought closer to skill acquisition and learning about that. Thank you for my, um, at your unknowingly push me into language learning. Um, and thank you for contacting me again. Thank you for putting up with me when I was your apprentice. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's an awesome memory. Thank you.